This Let's Edit with Media Composer tutorial is brought to you by VideoGuys.com, the leading reseller of video editing and production equipment for more than 25 years. And by Boris FX, a leading developer of visual effect plugins, titling, video editing, and workflow tools for broadcast, post-production, and film professionals. Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here and I am back again with another Let's Edit with Avid Media Composer tutorial and it's here. The day has finally arrived for 2019.6 of Media Composer and what I decided to do for this release is not do one lesson or two lessons but three different lessons focusing on different aspects of the new release. In this lesson we're going to focus on the project window or maybe not so much the project window anymore we're going to talk about the interface and then we're going to move on and wrap up by talking about workspaces. In our second lesson, we're going to focus specifically on bins and how bins have changed inside of 2019.6. And last but certainly not least, in our third lesson, we're going to talk about the new inspector tool and then look at some miscellaneous great new features that you're definitely going to want to know about. All right, so let's command or alt and tab into Avid Media Composer. Now, before we get rolling, there is something that's exceptionally important that I want to mention, and that is that if you are upgrading from a previous version, meaning that you've uninstalled a previous version of Media Composer and have installed 2019.6 all set to go, I highly, highly, highly recommend that you create new user settings before you get rolling. Now, you'll see why uh, in our third lesson in our look at 2019.6, where I talk about uh, a new option that's become available to you inside of your command palette and your keyboard settings. All right, so let's get rolling inside of this lesson by getting in and starting out by talking about the project window or really the lack there of a project window and exactly what is going on with that. Well, what's important to keep in mind about the project window is that for the most part, the project window was designed to contain bins. Now, really, we only really needed the bin window to contain bins because there were some other options in there like format, like settings that we did need access to, but not necessarily all the time. Now, we still have access to those windows and those tabs, just not readily available to us in the interface the way that things are set up now. So where do we actually get access to our things like our format options, things like our you know, our user settings, where do we get access to them? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to rely on keyboard shortcuts. Now, one thing that's important to keep in mind when working with 2019.6 is that I've come to notice that keyboard shortcuts have become more important than they ever have before. One of my most common keyboard shortcuts now is simply Command or Control and W to quit out of the project I'm working on and head back to the project window to choose a new project. Now, if you navigate up to the upper left-hand corner and hit the red X, that's actually going to quit out of Media Composer altogether. So what are we going to do to get in and get access to our format tab and our settings? What I'm going to do is I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut of Command, Shift, and Equal sign on the keyboard, Control, Shift, and Equal sign for all my Windows friends out there. And now the format tab has been placed in with the settings. I don't know if I would necessarily call it a setting, but that's okay for the purposes of what we're doing. Command shift and the equal sign or control shift and the equal sign gets us access to it. Now, there might be times where you're going to switch back and forth to this window once or twice, maybe when working in a project. That's why it's great to have it tucked away. But what's more important is our settings. Now, you're going to notice that our settings are now broken down into three categories, project, user, and site. Now, this is not new, but what is new is the fact that all of our project settings are now organized in one window. Same with our user settings, same with our site settings. So there's no more scrolling through all these options, trying to figure out what's a project setting, what's a user setting, and what's a site setting. You can simply tab through them now very quickly and very easily. So that, of course, does beg the question, what happened to the other tabs and other options like usage, like hardware and things like that? I'm just going to close the settings window and I'm going to navigate up to the Media Composer drop down on the Mac. This, I believe, would be in the Help drop down on Windows. And I'm going to say About Media Composer. Now you'll see that I have access to things like the hardware setup, even usage right here as well much like we had before inside of the project window. So keep that in mind. Again, these are really tools that you don't necessarily need access to. To be honest, you might look at them once or twice in the entire span of working on a project, but it's handy to know where they are since they have been tucked away since the project window has gone the way of the dodo, 
All right, let's close that up here. And what I want to do now is focus our attention on three concepts when it comes to working not just with bins, but also when working with your project in general. And that is tabbed, docked, or floating. So the question is, what is your interface doing? Is it tabbed, is it docked, or is it floating? What are your bins doing? Are they tabbed, are they docked, or are they floating? Now, the question, of course, is what exactly am I talking about, tab, docked, or floating? Well, with Media Composer 2019, the docking of panels really is the key here. You'll see that we have the ability to get in and change the interface up very intuitively, very dynamically, by having all of our windows docked together. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. When I, start work, when I started working with 2019.6, I hated the docked panels. I hated them. I did not like them at all. You know, it's the whole trying to teach an old dog new tricks. Now, I don't like to think of myself as that old, but you get what I'm getting at. I'm going to be honest now. The, the docked panels are the way to go especially when it comes to bins. But I don't want to tease that too much because I'm going to talk about that in our next lesson. But let's just talk a little bit about what's going on with tabbed, docked, and floating windows. So floating windows are how we used to work inside of Media Composer. And how a floating window works is just that. The window is not docked or tabbed to anything. It just floats around. Now, how we can get in and float any one of these windows is one of two ways. We can float everything or we can float a specific window. Now to float everything, what I'm gonna do is just navigate up to Windows and I can come down and I can float all panels. Okay, now I'm not gonna do that because I like the tabbed layout. What I wanna do is just float one window. And there's a couple ways that I can do this. What I can do is I can come up to the Composer window, I can come to the little arrow drop down and say, float this panel. Now you'll notice by floating it, what I have the ability to do is just to move this window wherever I wanna move it if I happen to have a second display, I could slide it right over onto the second display if I wanted to, or really whatever I needed to do. Now you'll notice that by untabbing this, or by basically by floating this window, we've now extended the bin container and the bin pane over here, all the way over to our workspaces panel over here on the right hand side. Okay, so let's take this window and what I'm now going to do is I'm going to dock it to our bin pane. So how are we going to go about doing this? Well, I'm simply going to grab the Composer tab and I'm going to come over here and we can do this one of two ways. Now, what I probably should have done to make my life easier is just move this like such, okay? What's important to keep in mind is that because this window has now essentially extended all the way over here to the right-hand side, that's where I want to attach it. I'm not going to attach it here. You'll see why in the next lesson. What I'm going to do is just grab that Composer tab and I'm just going to attach it right over here to the right-hand side. Now, you'll notice that by those green bars showing up, it's telling me where I can dock this. But when I actually hover right over top, what this is now showing me is how much of the window or how much of the, basically, our display is this now docked window going to take up. As soon as I let go, boom, there's the composer window back where it should be, and we're all set to go. Now... To be honest, once you start working with Media Composer 2019.6, it's a little bit daunting once you start tabbing things and docking them and undocking them. What I'm going to do here is I'm actually just going to float this window again because at any time, and we're going to talk about workspaces in just a second, at any time if you want to get things back to the way that they were when you first launched the application, just hit the Edit Workspace and Media Composer will basically get in and it will dock everything back together the way it was. Okay. So let's move on and let's now talk about tabbed when we're talking about the interface, not when we're talking about bins. We'll get to that in our next lesson. So how are we going to do this? Well, what I'm going to do to show you this is I'm actually going to change my interface just a little bit. I'm going to change this workspace when we talk about workspaces. What I like to do when I'm working inside of 2019.6, especially in the edit workspace, is I like to have my VU meters over here on the right hand side of my timeline. So what we're going to do is just call up the audio tool, Command or Control and 1 on the keyboard. Now you'll notice that by default, I kind of cheated it a bit. What has happened by default is that Media Composer has automatically tabbed this to my bin container. Okay, And what I'd like to do is just separate this. So I'm just going to pull it out and I'm just going to let go of it. Now you might be thinking to yourself, well, why didn't it dock to one of those other panels? What's important to keep in mind is that it's not going to dock to anything until you actually see that white highlight like such. Then it will dock itself. If I pull this out like such 
and I start bringing it close, but I don't actually hover over it, it's not going to dock that panel. But I do want to dock it down here on the lower right hand side beside my timeline. I'm just going to take that, drag it, drop it right down here, dock it where I want it, boom, all set to go. You know what though? I'd really like to have the effects editor as a tabbed window here. So how am I going to go about doing this? Well, let me show you. I'm going to navigate up to tools and I'm going to come down to the effect editor. Now you'll see the effects editor just appears like such. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this window and I'm just going to drag and drop it right down here like such and I'm going to attach it. However, the problem is what we're doing is we're making docked panels, which is not what I want. I want a tabbed panel. So let's just close the effects editor. I'm just going to bring back our audio tool over to here like such. And what we're going to do is bring that window back up again. Let's come down to our effect editor. I'm now going to, you'll see it automatically remembered where it was. Let's just float that panel because what I'm going to do now is instead of taking that and dragging it and attaching it, I'm going to grab the effect editor. I'm going to drag it over here, but I'm now going to hold option or alt. Now you'll notice as soon as I hit option or alt, all of the potential tabbed windows disappear because now what I have the ability to do, or pardon me, the docked windows disappear. What I now have the ability to do is to drag over that bar like such. You'll notice that the bar is highlighted and when I let go, this is now a tabbed window. Okay. Now I wanted to show that to you for the purpose of showing you how the tabbed windows work. I'm actually just going to close the effects editor because I want to talk a little bit about workspaces before we wrap this lesson up. So let's do that. What I want to do now is I want to update my workspace, the edit workspace, to now include the audio tool in the layout. Let's just bring that over here like such. What I'm going to do, and I've actually logged this as a feature request I'd like to have, which is wherever I tab or whatever I dock my audio tool, I'd like to have it stretch all the way down here. Conceivably, I'd like it to stretch the entire length of the screen if I want. It does squash itself down, but it just doesn't stretch all the way up like that. But what I'm going to do is put it right down here about there. Okay, And I'm going to come up to the edit workspace. You'll notice I have that little arrow just below it. If I click on it, you'll see I now have the ability to save the current workspace, restore the current workspace to its default, or create a new workspace. So because I want this to be the new default workspace, I'm simply going to say save current. Once I do now, I can switch to any different workspace here and come back at any time and select the edit workspace and you'll now see that there is our audio tool attached to the timeline or docked to the timeline all set to go. Now if we wanted to go back to what we were talking about before where we came to our tools, I came to the effects editor and you'll see that it's now tabbed itself in here. Maybe I want this to be a new workspace. So how you might think that you would do this is to right click here in the workspace pane. But what this lets us do is decide how we want to view the workspace bar. Do we want to see the icon and text, the icon only, or hide it all together? So let's keep moving down here to the bottom to our little menu option. And you'll see that I can now save a new workspace. I'm just going to call this miscellaneous because to be honest, it's not really one that I'm going to keep. So I'm going to call it miscellaneous. I'll say OK. And you'll now see that workspace appear over here in my workspace panel. And at any time, much like with our edit workspace, we can save the current one, restore it to its default, create a new workspace, or even delete it. Now again, we can switch to the color workspace, come back to miscellaneous, and everything is now laid out exactly the way that we had it before. Now, to be honest, I don't really like this workspace. I did call it miscellaneous for a reason. So let's delete it. I'm going to say I'm sure I want to delete it. I'm going to say OK. Just switch back to the edit workspace. We have our audio tool back. And now we are ready to move on and talk about bins. But we'll do that in the next lesson. All right. Now as we're wrapping up, I want to remind you to check out our sponsors, Video Guys, for all of your Avid software and hardware, as well as thousands of other products that you can check out over at Video Guys. Dot com. I also want to give a big shout out to the team at Boris FX, makers of BCC, Sapphire, and Mocha. And don't forget to use that coupon code of MC101 to get 10% off your next BCC license. And if you have any questions, you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, you can send them to me at Kevin P. McAuliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.